We're here in Jackson Center at the Airstream factory, but we're not here for the factory. We're actually going to go in and see the new Heritage Museum. We dropped the trailer off today to have the repairs done. So while we're here, we decided to come over and take a look at the new building. And we've got something special in, for, in store for you too. Samantha Martin, who is the curator of the museum, is actually going to give us a tour of the museum today. So we're really looking forward to that and, and really seeing the museum. So let's head inside. history that you can learn a lot about. And then over here uh, we have our 1938 Clipper. Uh, this airstream is affectionately nicknamed Old Granddad. Um, Wally Byam introduced the first riveted aluminum uh, silver bullet style airstream in 1936 and he called that model the Clipper um, and so Old Granddad is a great example of that model. That is neat. Is our intro theater, our Heritage Center intro theater. So we have uh, a couple of really great uh, video pieces for you to watch. We've got a piece that talks about Wally Byam's creed, um, his vision for the Airstream way of life. We've got a piece that talks about a family out on the road uh, living in their Airstream full time. And then we've got a piece that celebrates our 90th anniversary, which happened last year. As you make your way into the Heritage Center, this is the first section that you're going to see. Uh, this is devoted to 1930s and 1940s uh, decades of, of Airstream history. So over here we have the 1930s section. Um, and then we are really fortunate to have this 1938 airline. Uh, this is one of the early Can-Ham style um, factory built Airstreams that Wally was producing in the 1930s. Um, to our knowledge, there are only uh, a very small number of factory-built 1930s Airstreams that are the wooden can ham style still around, and this is the only air light that we know of that's still in existence. So, originally, the air light would have had its wooden painted exterior. At some point in its lifetime, this one was skinned with aluminum on the exterior, um, which probably helped it survive up until this point, but the interior is still really original. Um, so that's definitely a, a something that you have to see when you come out here to check out the Heritage Center. And you don't think of Airstream when you see something like this. This is so different. Yeah, it's really, it's interesting too, you know, um, old granddad that we just saw, the Clipper, and this air light are actually the same age. And so we often get asked, what's the oldest Airstream here in the Heritage Center? So we have a tie. Yeah. We have our 1938 Clipper, we have our 1938 air light. Um, and really, if you can picture these canned hams, these wooden canned hams are sort of Wally's bread and butter. Um, he was manufacturing more of them, they were a lower price point, and then the aluminum silver bullet clipper style, um, you know, that was a highly luxurious customizable model, so those were fewer and far between. And then, so, uh, Wally actually paused production of Airstream during World War II, um, and he went into the aviation industry. Um, after the war, he got back, 
and he uh, he reintroduced Airstream, and then we have a great mural from that timeline on the wall here that shows a French cyclist named Alfred Letourneur, um, who Wally hired to come out to the factory and tow an Airstream with his bike to really prove its lightweight nature. And so we invite visitors to get up on the bike and get their picture recreated uh, of that iconic moment there in Airstream history. And this one happens to be a 1949 liner here. Uh, and the great thing about the liner, when, he, when Wally reintroduced Airstream after the war, um, this liner model has these uh, semi-circular rounded ends on both ends and they have large oval windows which allows you to see completely through the airstream when backing up. Oh, that's neat. Yeah. And then uh, this one over here, this is also a liner. This is the 16-foot Wee Wind. So that was the smallest, the shortest of the liner offerings at the time in the late 1940s. So this is a 1948. Um, and this one is actually nicknamed Ruby. Uh, and that's because the original owners, they were a married couple, Harry and Ruby Mann. So it's named Ruby after her. Um, we've got some great photos of Ruby in the 40s with this Airstream, uh, but we're really lucky to have this one because it's extremely original. Um, the floor tile, the wooden cabinetry, the stainless steel galley, the interior paint, even the upholstery uh, is original. The upholstery still has the factory tag on it, which is pretty unheard of. Yeah. Awesome. And, and the, the National Park pillows. Yes. I noticed them in there. <laughs> yes, Those are yeah. cool. Those are cool, too. And then the little butane tank yeah. uh, is original, too, which is pretty cool. Thanks to the estate of Helen Byam Schwamborn through a donation from Dale Peewee Schwamborn, uh, we have an incredible collection of uh, artifacts from early Airstream history, um, Wally's early life and childhood, family memorabilia, and we also have uh, Wally's personal Soundscriber machine. So this was Wally's dictation machine um, that he would use while out leading these caravans to record notes. Um, he would see how the product w was doing in these different environments, whether it would be a desert or, um, you know, taking it through some pretty extreme or rough roads. And then he would send notes back to the factory with any improvements that he found that needed to be made. And so this is the machine that he would use to, uh, to record himself. He would send these little green discs um, ca called Soundscribers back to the factory. They would transcribe those and then get to work, uh, you know, really implementing whatever solutions Wally, Wally had observed or come up with. And so uh, we were really fortunate through that donation to acquire a lot of these Soundscriber discs, so we sent those out to be digitized. So now we have hours of Wally audio, um, <laughs> which is pretty incredible. So you can come to the Heritage Center and, and you can listen to Wally um, kind of talk you through you know, this time period in Airstream history, which is pretty incredible. Yeah. Yeah, so this is, uh, this is also a late 40s. This is a 1949 Whirlwind. Um, the key thing about the Whirlwind, as you can see, it has two doors. So you'd either have one on either side or both of them on the same side like the one in our collection. Um, but for contrast, you know, Ruby was the shortest offering. That's a 16 foot. This was the longest offering at the time. This is a 28 foot. And then uh, this, this case here, really speaks to the Helen Byam Schwamborn collection, which I alluded to earlier. So Helen is pictured on the left here. Uh, she was Wally's first cousin, and she was selected by Wally to help uh, organize and lead the Wally Byam Caravan Club from its founding in 1955 up until she retired in 1979. So Helen was really instrumental in organizing those caravans that traveled all around the world. Uh, she, you know, published the uh, club's newsletter. She served on the company's board of directors. She was a really key figure in Airstream history and making both the club and the Airstream uh, company what it is today. And uh, her son there, Dale Pee Wee Schwamborn, is featured on the right hand side there. Um, so Dale, you know, Dale went on the very first caravan with Wally in 1951 and 1952. Um, he served in leadership roles in various caravans. He worked for Airstream out in California for a while. Um, and thankfully, both Helen and Dale kept this amazing archive of Airstream history and graciously Dale donated that on behalf of his mother's estate to the Heritage Center so that visitors can, can view these, these uh, you know, one of a kind artifacts and, and pieces of Airstream history. So I'll point out a few to you as well. So here we have a 1957 issue of National Geographic. Um, which features the 1956 European caravan. Um, we have Helen's squash blossom necklace there, which is absolutely beautiful. 
you can see her in that photo there wearing that. Um, we have Helen's passport. Um, we have some currency and stamps uh, from the 1959-1960 Africa Caravan. Um, and then speaking of the Africa Caravan, we have this Western Union telegram there. And that telegram is from Wally to Helen, announcing that the Africa Caravan had made it to their final destination in Cairo, Egypt. <laughs> this is one, if you've ever gone taken the old factory tour, you saw this sitting outside yes. the uh, um, service center. And it's nice to see it's finally got a home yeah, indoors. It, yeah, it's wonderful. There are a few of the vintage Airstreams outside uh, for years in our collection. And so it's great to have them indoors and protected and on display. Um, this is the Airstream, the gold Airstream that Wally used to lead that Africa caravan from Cape Town to Cairo. Um, it was built in 1957 here in Jackson Center, actually at the Ohio factory. And originally, uh, the gold trailer was made gold by anodizing the aluminum. Oh. Um, Wally towed it with a two-tone gold International Harvester truck. Um, and the, at the time, the company was kind of experimenting with the idea of offering different colored Airstreams. Um, you know, sort of to match the color of your tow vehicle or what right. have you. So, um, ultimately, the anodizing process proved to not be really feasible. Um, so they, they stepped away from that concept. And then later in life, uh, the gold Airstream was actually painted an automotive body gold um, because the anodizing process, the panels had started to fade at different rates. Yeah. So you had kind of different shades of gold all over the Airstream. So. Uh, but we do have some really uh, interesting pieces in this case as well. Um, so we, you can see here Wally's passport, um, which accordions out with all of the countries that they visited on that caravan. Um, we have the iconic pith helmet uh, that you'll see in all of the caravan pictures. And then that little notebook there in the center uh, is really neat because Stella, um, Stella and Wally uh, worked together and Stella had this dream, this vision for the ideal floor plan. Um, and so they sketched out what was the original floor plan um, for this Airstream, the gold Airstream. And so that's what you can see there in that notebook. Stella really wanted to maximize living space for two. Right. So this Airstream here uh, is a 1957 bubble. Um, this was owned by Oscar and Etta Payne. Um, and what's really great about this one, you can see here um, that the panes went on several of the major caravans and they actually used this 57 bubble on the Africa trip. So in some ways the gold airstream and this bubble have been reunited after all these years. Um, the really neat thing about the panes is after they finished the Africa portion, um, they did the a portion of the European caravan. Um, and then they set off and they, they really they kept exploring. They went with a few other families um, and they toured the USSR and then they split off and they did what would be some scouting for the eventual around the world caravan. Ooh. They did India and the Far East. Um, all in all, they shared a 16 foot bubble for 869 oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Wow! So you can see there they went all around the world. Um, and so we're really fortunate not only to have this Airstream on display um, thanks to their family, but they also um, Oscar and Etta had all of these home movies of the different caravans, um, so the family sent us those um, oh. real films and we sent those out to be digitized. So if you come to the Heritage Center and you check out this kiosk here, you can see their home movies of all the, all the caravans. Um, and then we have several of Etta's books that she wrote about the different trips. Um, and I love this picture here. This is actually Etta um, <laughs> pushing this Airstream uh, <laughs> through the desert sands in Africa, which is pretty incredible. Wow. Uh, <laughs> and then uh, this display here um, is what we call our caravan theater. Uh, so you have several buttons here that you can choose from, and these show uh, films of what we call the Big Four. So that's the very first caravan in 1951 and 1952 to Central America. It's the first time the caravans went overseas to Europe in 1956. Um, it's the 1959-1960 Africa caravan, and then the 1963 and 1964 Around the World caravan. So I highly recommend you check those out. We have um, interviews with some of the caravanners. They're, they're really cool pieces. And speaking of the Around the World caravan, so this is number 692. This is the 1963 trade win uh, that the Golden family used on the Around the World caravan. So. The Around the World Caravan traveled from Singapore to Portugal. 
Um, and this is what the airstream that Virgil and Grace Golden used on that iconic trip. Um, as you can see here, Virgil and Grace, uh, they went on several of the major caravans and they were actually one of only seven couples to do both Africa and around the world. Wow. Um, and so this is the airstream that they had custom ordered for around the world. And the really neat thing about this story, um, after they got back from around the world, they eventually sold this airstream. Uh, and then their son Tom and his wife Ethelwyn, uh, they are airstreamers themselves. And so a few years ago, they were determined they wanted to find uh, their, his parents around the world airstream. So Tom spent uh, roughly five years trying to track it down. Um, and he finally found it and he talked the gentleman that had it into selling it to him. Um, and then he had it restored. And then the Golden family, they graciously donated not only 692, the airstream here, um, but several boxes of artifacts that Virgil and Grace had collected during their trips. And then we also have, um, this is our 1964 Bambi tube, so it's the 17 foot version. Um, and in the doorway there, you can see we have several pieces on loan to us from the club. Um, so we have one of the blue, uh, wool blue berets. Um, we have a caravan songbook some club badges, just some really um, incredible club and caravan memorabilia. Um, and then we have some here in this picnic table display as well. Um, artifacts from the around the world trip and a few other of the major caravans. And then this portion here of the Heritage Center really follows Airstream's um, product development over the years and research and development, maybe some of our lesser known products. Um, so for example, this one here, is our 1978 Argosy Minuet. Um, so the Argosy was actually a sub-brand that Airstream created um, in 1972. Um, and so this year actually marks the 50th anniversary of the Argosy. But the Argosy was built at a third factory location just down the road from Jackson Center in Versailles, Ohio. Um, and the idea was that this Argosy sub-brand would be a lower price point product. And so um, it would allow customers to really get into the Airstream uh, lifestyle. And then maybe, you know, they would fall in love with it and they would eventually trade up for an Airstream was kind of the thought process there. So there. as I mentioned, uh, the Airstream Motorhome started in the late 1970s, 1979. We introduced what's today known as the Airstream Classic Motorhome. So it looks like a, a silver bullet, you know, on top of that motorhome chassis. Pretty quickly after that development, the company realized um, that that motorhome offered up some really interesting commercial opportunities. So uh, one of those more interesting commercial <laughs> opportunities um, is what you'll get to see here in the Heritage Center. This is the Airstream Funeral Coach. Uh, so we only built 32 of these, so this is one of 32. Um, but the idea is that the funeral coach would replace the traditional funeral home procession. So uh, the funeral home director drives it, the family rides along, and then the side compartment holds the casket, and the rear compartment opens up uh, with a hatch and holds the flowers. It was really an all-in-one vehicle. Um, as I mentioned, one of 32, it didn't really catch on that strongly, uh, but it is an interesting part of our history, uh, and you'll get to check that out when you come to the Heritage. That's Center. cool. Uh, we're really fortunate to have this Airstream here. Um, this is a 1955 Commodore Vanderbilt. Um, it is on loan to us from the Gully Collection. Uh, the Commodore, if you can picture, was really the top-of-the-line model of its day. Um, th there are actually only three um, that we can find. So this is one of three that was produced. So it has wood pocket doors, it has a bathtub in the back, um, really just an, an incredible Airstream. And this particular Airstream is still really original. There are only a few modifications that have been done to it. So it's pretty incredible. So we're lucky to have that one on display here for a while. And the drinkware. Yeah. I think every Airstream owner had that. My parents had those. Really? That's awesome. <laughs> Didn't they? I think so, yeah. Yeah. And this is our 1955 Flying Cloud that was owned by Martin and Virginia Wright. Um, so as you can see from the uh, Martin and Virginia Wright have their club numbers up top, their big red numbers, but they also have the little red stars. And so each red star indicates five years of membership in the club. Uh, so the Wright family, they were longtime members, which is really neat. And then uh, the last Airstream that you see here, this is Wally's White Airstream. So this is a 1955 cruiser um, that Wally used to lead the 1956 European caravan. Um, we've got some great images of Wally and Stella leading that uh, caravan with this Airstream. 
Um, it was painted white to match Wally's white Cadillac, which was his tow vehicle. Um, and the incredible story about this one, uh, after the European caravan, Wally had sold this Airstream and it was sort of lost to time. Um, and so uh, a few years ago, it popped up for sale online, but it didn't look anything like it did then on the caravan or like it does today. It had been spray painted silver. Uh, and they had spray painted sort of these stenciled butterflies on it. And it, was, it was in pretty rough shape. Um, but it popped up for sale online and it said it was in 1955. And uh, Scott Gordon, who's an avid vintage Airstreamer, he saw it pop up for sale and he was looking at it and he said, well, it doesn't have the right number of end cap segments for a 55. It's got too few. And he's looking at the window and the door style and he's like, this doesn't add up to be a 55. So he starts looking into it um, and comparing some pictures and he realized what it was and that it was indeed a 55 but Wally was experimenting with that reduction in end cap segments on his own airstream first to see how it would work out uh, and so Scott bought it and his whole family spent a couple years restoring it um, and it's honestly one of the most meticulous restorations I've ever seen um, because not only did they get all the details of the airstream and the interior correct but they started taking archival photos um, of that caravan and they saw that Wally had a certain type of typewriter um, and a radio and they found the right year and oh, model wow. <laughs> of those items. Uh, the candle holders are correct, the cups are correct, they have Wally's, uh, he had a Solex motorbike, they have the right year and model of Solex bike on the back, I mean it's incredible. Oh it really becomes a sort of time capsule of this moment in history. So yeah. it's, it's something to check out. We have a video on the Gorenson's restoration story that you can watch too. Um, so I highly recommend checking that out. Well, Samantha, we want to thank you very much yes. for taking the time to show us around the museum. This, this place is awesome. And if you haven't had the opportunity to get here, I encourage everyone to make a stop on their way through. It's definitely worth the time. I well, appreciate that. appreciate you guys coming out. And yeah, everybody feel free to, to come check it out, take a factory tour, see how Airstreams are made, come visit the mothership. So. Oh, we, we appreciate that. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. We finished the Heritage Center tour for Airstream. What did you think? It's beautiful. There, there's so much history in there. Um, different uh, Airstreams throughout the years, um, all beautifully displayed. And we had the benefit of our own um, private tour. Private tour, yes. Yeah. By Samantha Martin. Yeah, we really appreciate Samantha for taking the time to walk us through. Um, it, it was an awesome, and if, I have the feeling that if you come out here and visit the museum and you happen to see Samantha, she would love to show you around. She is very passionate about their display here and, and knows everything about it. So definitely uh, worth stopping in Jackson Center when you're coming through this area. Right, right. Yep, she's a wealth of information, and we really appreciate her taking us around. Yep. Now, you can also sign up and take a factory tour, but you have to do that online. And unfortunately for us, for our time here, the online tours were sold out for the next couple of weeks. So if you do want to do a factory tour at some point, plan that well into advance. Right now, I was looking at, this is the middle of August, and the first available tours were in September. So plan that about a month and a half ahead, you know, during the summertime. You do get to look inside the factory though. There is a very nice viewing window on the second floor so you can walk up there and take a look. It's pretty impressive. Yeah, that is true, that is true. It is really neat to see all those Airstreams in there. Yes, it is. And it's a very nice, spacious, clean factory. It is. And it's well worth the trip here. Yeah. So even if you don't have to come to the factory for repairs or whatever, it's definitely worth a trip on its own. Yeah, so don't back your trailer into a gate just to come here to see the, the museum tour. You can come without doing any of that. Right, or any other unfortunate incident. So. Yeah, exactly. Well, guys, we hope you enjoyed our uh, little visit here to the Airstream Heritage Center. And if you did, what should they do? Subscribe to our channel, Zephyr Travels. Give us a thumbs up and hit that bell for notifications so you catch our videos every week as we post them. And until the next time, as Wally said, we don't say goodbye on caravans. We say, see you see down the road. road. And I understand you're a new RBC owner, too. I am. <laughs> uh, just a little over a month ago, I acquired a, a 
1978 Argosy Minuet um, and love it. So. That's it's cool. Awesome. <laughs> Welcome to the club. Thank you. <laughs> literally, actually. Yeah, literally, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's been it's been wonderful. 